Hello, I'm Professor Wool, and today we'll be discussing the right way to audit AWS policies. So to set us up, um, you have an Amazon estate, Amazon Web Services, uh, and you now need to do a security audit to make sure that um, the policies that are enforced by the AWS security groups are in line with the policies that you want them to. So let's acquaint ourselves quickly with what you have to deal with. On the left hand side here you can see uh, the security groups that were defined in your estate. You can see that I've sketched three of them. There is one in blue for Linux based servers. There is a security group in black for uh, database servers. And there's a security group in orange for uh, Apache web servers. And maybe you have more of these, um, each designed for some purpose. Uh, and over here you have all the instances uh, that belong to the VPC that you're currently auditing. So the question that I'd like to uh, think about today is what is the level at which you're going to do your audit? So the obvious choice, if you're just using the AWS tools, uh, the plain vanilla AWS tools, is to look at each of these security groups and review it. So you can look at uh, the rules for um, uh, Apache web servers and the Apache security group, look over the rules, compare them to um, the corporate policies and regulatory requirements that you might have, and see if these match. And then you can repeat the same type of review for the other security groups. And this is fine. However, there are um, uh, two challenges here. Um, when you're looking at a security group on its own, you don't have context. You don't know if it's even associated with any kind of instance because it might just be floating and not doing anything. That's perfectly possible in uh, AWS. Uh, and also, you have to remember, as we spoke in an earlier lesson, that security groups can be mixed and matched. So you can have multiple security groups associated with, with individual instances. And here I've sketched um, instances that have two security groups associated with them. So let's say this one over here has uh, both the database security group associated with it and also the blue Linux security group associated with it. So both of them together. Um, and if you want to understand what your uh, security stance is, you really need to look at the combination of uh, all the security groups associated with an instance. If you just look at a security group in isolation, you're getting a partial view of the security stance and you don't have context. So this is not the ideal way to do a security review. Conversely, you could look at the instances. You could look at every one of these instances and see that uh, uh, on this one you have a combination of uh, the orange security group and the blue security group, and on this one you have a combination of the black security group and the red security group, and you can review each instance on its own. You get a very accurate um, review of what is protecting each instance. The trouble is that there are lots of instances. You might have thousands of them, so this doesn't scale well. Uh, and it's extremely repetitive because, as you can see, lots of these instances have exactly the same combination of security groups associated with them. So what's the right balance? How do you do this in a way that's both accurate but uh, reasonably uh, uh, contained in terms of scale. And this is where I'd like to introduce the concept of a security container. This is not an Amazon concept. This is uh, a concept that we're uh, um, meeting for the first time here in class. Uh, so what's a security container? So in my view, a security container is the collection of all the instances that have exactly the same combination of security groups associated with them. So if you look at, at this sketch, you can see that these two instances over here have precisely the same security groups associated with them, the black and the blue. Uh, and these three over here are another security container because they all are associated with the orange and blue, and, and these two have the, uh, the black and the red, etc. The point is that if you look at a security container, by definition, all the servers, all the instances in it have exactly the same security group combination. And therefore, from a security review point of view, they're all identical. They're all uh, clones. Uh, so it's enough to review one of them. 
And once you review that one and you've convinced yourself that the policies enforced by the combination of all the rules of all the security groups associated with that instance are in line with what you want to allow in your organization, then you know that all the instances in this security container are equally protected and uh, you don't need to look at the rest of them. So if you look at the audit at this level of abstraction, you look at these security containers and review each security container, then on the one hand you've covered every possible active combination of security groups that you have in your estate, so you're not neglecting anything, but on the other hand you're uh, doing just the right amount of work and you're not uh, facing some kind of um, explosion in the effort that you need to spend because you have all these instances. And there are security systems and tools that can work at this level of abstraction and assist you. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.